Back here now, jumping into the action of this next segment, more of an open-ended segment. I'd like to include this on here, and we're going to get more of these as we get into the season, I presume, with all the different twists and turns and storylines that we see typically in the NFL season. But this one stood out to me just right off of the bat because not only will Baltimore be traveling to Kansas City on Thursday in a rematch of that AFC Conference Championship game, Everyone obviously looking at the matchup between Lamar and Patrick Mahomes, arguably the two best quarterbacks in the NFL, right? You have the reigning MVP in Lamar Jackson, and then going up against Patrick Mahomes, the best quarterback, I think without a doubt, in the NFL, arguably, probably arguably the greatest of all time. He needs a couple more Super Bowls, a few more Super Bowls, actually, um, with Tom Brady to compete with him, but very much on the path there to uh, to that standard, right? Only 28 years old, and he's coming off of back-to-back Super Bowl championships. So that's the, that's the standard that we're dealing with with these two quarterbacks, right? And it hasn't been for all those accolades that I could list off for Lamar and for Patrick, obviously. Um, it hasn't been such an even matchup in the five matchups that they've had over their careers. You have Patrick Mahomes, currently leading that series 4-1 to one versus Lamar Jackson all time. And more eyes on this game because of how I think Baltimore lost that game at home in the AFC Championship game um, in back in January, right? They were the number one seed. They had home field advantage throughout the entire thing. And won't, don't you know it, Patrick Mahomes walks in there, just beats Baltimore, only scoring 10 points, the Ravens in that game, and leaving them very disappointed after a year where I think a lot of people believe that this was going to be their year, right? It's been a slow climb so far for the Ravens. You look back to how they started with Lamar Jackson, right? Very poor debut in the playoffs against the Chargers, I believe. Played awful. And then slowly, you know, they made it past the next round. They had their little thing going with the Tennessee Titans. They eventually rose up above them, making it past them into the next round. Then Lamar gets hurt, gets eliminated. The Ravens get eliminated from the playoffs that next year. And then you have this year, right? You have this year where everything seems to fall in the right place. You have an awesome defense. Lamar just continuing his own development, passing the ball a little bit better. Um, Zay Flowers coming in, drafting him as a rookie. A lot of good play from him early on. Um, Just everything is going right for them. Offensively, defensively, they have one of the best records in the NFL. And again, I stress that last year, 2023, seemed like it was going to be their year. I think most people would agree that uh, they were the best team of the regular season. They were the most dominant team. And they showed it, I think, mostly when they played in that Christmas Day game or it was around New Year's or something like that when they took on the 49ers and just absolutely kicked them out of their own stadium unless it was in Baltimore I can't remember where it was but regardless of that regardless of the other facts they destroyed the 49ers really making their claim to being the dominant team in um, in the regular season because up until that point the Chiefs were dealing with a lot of different things and Regardless of all of that, there was still that doubt, right? You know, there was still the fact that you had to go through Patrick Mahomes. And just like most people probably would have predicted, Patrick in the playoffs makes the difference, beats the Ravens, and now we're here. We're here at this moment. The first game of the 2024 season is going to be a rematch of that game. And while I do obviously know, acknowledge that this is not going to really affect Either of these teams probably in the grand scheme of things, you know, the playoffs, everything like that. We're a long way away from that. These teams could look completely different by then, depending on how the season plays out. So it's not going to affect anything in the grand scheme of it. But it does bring up this question now that they're facing each other yet again. And all eyes are going to be on these two quarterbacks because I think the narrative around both of these teams is such molded around, so sculpted around both of these guys for obvious reasons, right? The question, is there more pressure on Lamar, just Lamar personally, specifically in that matchup with Patrick Mahomes, or is there just more pressure overall 
on the Ravens to finally beat the Kansas City Chiefs and make it to a Super Bowl. Um, and to me, just to get my answer out of the way, I think I think there is more pressure. I believe there's more pressure on Lamar Jackson to beat Patrick Mahomes for a couple reasons, right? Um, the record itself speaks for itself. The one and four record, if you're Lamar Jackson against Patrick, is not a good look. Obviously, just personally, because against every other team in the NFL, I think he's something like 57 and 13 all time against every other team. The only team he really struggles against that bad, like he does with Patrick Mahomes, is the Pittsburgh Steelers, which I believe he's two and four against. So that's pretty much it. Everybody else, he has a great record. I think like a 70 something percent win percentage against every other team. So that's one thing that stands out, right? If you're so dominant like this, if you're Lamar and have so much success, talent-wise, production-wise, everything like that, um, it can't help, at least for me, bother you having these two blemishes, especially when one of them is the other most talented quarterback in the NFL, right? Because I do believe that these two guys, apart from any issues that the Ravens, that the Chiefs may have... I think having either of these guys as your quarterback masks a lot of the deficiencies that your team may face in the regular season, right? Going back to last year, Patrick, the issues were crazy with their wide receivers, right? Dropping everything. The offense just didn't look as crisp as it usually does. Um, but regardless of that, they make it into the playoffs, obviously winning their division. And in the playoffs, the difference maker is Patrick being able to, to carry his team to the levels that they need to to win those big games. And similar with Lamar, right? This year, you lose three starters on the offensive line. You do bring in Derrick Henry, which is a big help, but um, you lose some guys on defense. But even still, with all of that being a fact, I think most people still have the Ravens being one of the best teams in the NFL just simply because of Lamar Jackson. Not a lot of guys can really say they have that effect on their teams. Probably Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, and that's probably about it um, in today's NFL. So th these two guys stand out from just a talent standpoint. The struggle that Lamar has faced uh, going up against Patrick Mahomes is another thing, obviously. And um, just that slow climb that I mentioned before, it's been step by step for the Baltimore Ravens getting to this point. They got to the AFC Championship game for the first time, and they lost. Now, if you continue this slow progression, you would think that the next step is finally getting over that and making it to the Super Bowl because this team, honestly, going back to um, a point that supports the other side of this argument as a team, they are too talented, similar to the 49ers, to not um, make a Super Bowl or win a Super Bowl. The Ravens are creeping into that territory, but now... Um, they are facing this next step, right? The final boss, if you will. The final test of getting to that promised land, which is the Super Bowl. Finally slaying this dragon in Patrick Mahomes. And to do that, I think the biggest thing for me, why I believe there's more pressure on Lamar Jackson is because when these two teams, when you have two situations that are so evenly matched, you have to look at different aspects of each team to try and convince you if you're trying to pick a winner right you have to look at each team which one fills you with more confidence and that's the team you're going to go with right but it's very it's very hard to pick a winner a clear winner from these two rosters because they are so well built you look at the defenses both of them are very very good even still Roquan Smith Chris Jones um I'm forgetting the cornerback from the Chiefs his name Trent McDuffie that's who um, elsewhere on the Ravens, Marlon Humphrey, Kyle Hamilton, great defenses on both sides. Offensively, Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Zay Flowers, now Derrick Henry, Travis Kelsey, Rasheed Rice, Xavier Worthy, great offensive lines, great head coaches. So where is the difference going to show up in these games, right? The difference has to be these two quarterbacks. And then when you look at their matchups in some of these big games, when it comes down to it, when it comes down to deciding these games, the quarterbacks have to make the difference. And 
more often than not, Patrick has done that in these matchups against Lamar Jackson, and especially last year, because that one has left this bad taste in our mouths. If you're a Ravens fan or just watching that game, only putting up 10 points at home, having your defense put up great stops against the the Chiefs offense and keeping you within reach of tying the game or anything like that. Um, again, for the offense to just fall short. And so much of the Ravens offense is built around Lamar Jackson, rightly so, right? Because he is so talented. But again, when you put up 10 points, because everything is so centered around you, you're going to be looked upon as one of the main reasons why this just didn't work out, right? Why this fell short and only putting up 10 points um, doesn't doesn't sit well with a lot of people. If you lose in a way like like Joe Burrow loses to Patrick Mahomes, he's, only, he's the only other quarterback that has beaten him in the playoffs. But if you lose like Joe Burrow does in the conference championship game to Patrick, no one's really going to say anything because the, it's not like the offense really stuttered or anything like that. If you're Josh Allen even... Losing last year on a missed field goal by your kicker or that other year where the Chiefs score with like 10 seconds left to go in the game. Those sort of losses aren't really so focused around, so focused on the quarterbacks. But when you lose and only put up 10 points, that really speaks volumes and it's more amplified that way, right? If that makes sense. And then also, um, I am putting a lot of pressure on Lamar just because that is the question. But it's not just Lamar that faces this pressure or is looked upon to be Patrick Mahomes. It happens to virtually every quarterback. It's going to happen to C.J. Stroud. It happens to Josh Allen. Um, it's happened to Joe Burrow, even though he's beaten him. But um, the way everything happens with Lamar, the way that they lost in that game, I think they have no other choice but to avenge that. And I mentioned Derrick Henry before. That only gives you more reason to you know, have this game be more of a must win for the Ravens, right, than it is the Chiefs, right? Because the Chiefs got better, obviously, but adding a guy like Derrick Henry to this Ravens team back there with Lamar in this running game, it's going to be a nightmare to stop. So adding a guy of that standard to your team already, it's not going to lessen any pressure or take off any of the burden because everything is still centered around Lamar. And it's not like he's oblivious to the fact he knows that. He tried to downplay this first game, which was to be expected. But once it gets to those playoffs, I think you can run from it. I think just embracing that pressure is going to be what is required for Lamar and this Ravens team to finally get over that hump. And it's going to be a challenge, right? No one is going to make it out of the AFC without beating the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. And I feel like already before the season started, I feel like it's going to have to be the Ravens, just because of how everything's being built up around them, building up this mini rivalry of sorts, which is which is great, seeing great football towards the end of the year. But we have a long way to go till then. But in terms of this question, I think without a doubt, it has to be Lamar with more pressure to beat Patrick Mahomes at this point in time, which will take us to the end of that segment. Two more segments to cover on today's show, giving an update on the Hassan Reddick holdout thus far all the 49ers players that were threatening of holding out are back with the team now it's just up to Hassan Reddick will he miss time in the regular season we're going to answer that question coming up in the next segment and also going through the final predictions on the standings for each division this time looking at the AFC East so those two are coming up right after this break don't go anywhere 